Welcome to the tutorial After Effects Scripting for Absolute Beginners. At the end of the tutorial, you will be able to write a script that applies an expression to all the properties you have selected in After Effects. But even better, you will also have a good understanding of all the different aspects of scripting. I will discuss all the concepts one by one so it will become very clear how each part of the code works. If you want to know a specific thing, I'll put timestamps for all the things I cover in the description. Let's begin. Scripts for After Effects are essentially automated actions that are performed by After Effects. So we command After Effects by telling it to do different actions. Everything that we normally do with our mouse and keyboard to interact with After Effects can also be done with scripting. To command After Effects we need to speak its language, which is unfortunately not English but Extend Script. Extend Script is a variation of JavaScript, so if you know JavaScript you'll come a long way. In this tutorial I will assume that you don't know any JavaScript yet, so I'll start really simple and build from there. To write code and run it in After Effects we'll need a code editor. Um, you can download Extend Script Toolkit CC from the Adobe website. This is a uh, special program that's created for creating code and then running it in the Adobe product. So you can also make scripts for Photoshop, etc. So just go to this link. I'll put a link on my website and my website a link in the description. And then just go to Extend Script Toolkit CC and just download the Windows or Mac version. Uh, so I'll put it on this website here. You can click on the link here. I'll also have other resources about variables, functions, and things we're going to cover in the tutorial here. So if you want to read more about it, just go to that website and click on the links and read. You'll learn a lot. So now this is the code editor. We are going to code for Adobe After Effects. So then just click here and then select After Effects and then click on this icon. It may be red. And then After Effects isn't started yet. So if you click on it, it will automatically start After Effects up. And then if we write code in here, we can send this code to After Effects. And then we can test the code live. So we can write code in here, send it to After Effects by clicking on this green icon and see what happens. So the first thing we're going to cover is variables. Variables are very important. And they store information that we use within our programs. And we can manipulate these variables and it also provides a way of labeling data so we can read our uh, program more easily. A variable you create by typing var for variable, then the name of your variable. I'm just going to type my variable and then typing equals a variable to contain text. You always need to use quotation marks. So text that you want to display is always in quotation marks. Remember that. So my text just put it in here and then with extend script we always end the line with a semicolon one semicolon not two so this is our first line of code um, we declare a variable by typing var and then the name of the variable equals and then your text a variable can contain text it can contain numbers it can contain a boolean a boolean is just um, true or it's false so that's a boolean. It can also contain a list of items, but I'll go into that later. So for now, we're just going to use my my variable text. Now, if you want to just quickly test this in After Effects, we can write alert. Alert creates a pop-up in After Effects, and you can input the text you want the pop-up to display within these two uh, parentheses. So we just type my variable. So this now points to this variable and this variable contains this text. So what we actually do is we send this text with into this alert function and now when we run it, look After Effects and um, we put the code into After Effects and this is what we get out of it. Oh, my computer is lagging. And um, my variable text. So now if we just change, if we change this variable, click on run again, we change the text. Um, we, we name variables mostly by using camel case. Um, camel case means that the first letter of the variable is a small letter and then instead of spaces you can have spaces in your variable names. So instead of spaces we just use capital letter. So my variable is 
cool would be like this without spaces but capitalizing the first um, letter of each word so that's camel case and I recommend to use that so when you see like this you like no it's a variable because the first letter is small and the uh, next letters are capital so for naming variables there are a couple conventions you can't use um, dashes or something you can't begin with a number you can't um, have spaces so you can just have like this and then space it's case sensitive it has to be unique um, yeah that's about it so remember that next functions the best example I can give you of a function is this so alert was a function that we used um, functions are also kind of like variables but they don't contain like text or numbers but they contain actions so actions you want something you want to perform so functions you can call on them and then they just do the actions that are in the functions you can type a function by typing function no shit Sherlock <laughs> and then typing the name of the function just just like the variable then typing these parentheses and then two curly brackets now the thing we want a function to do we can put inside these curly brackets so if we want to put this function within my new function we can just do it like that and now whenever we call my function like this we run the code that is within this function so we run this alert code so we can type my function like four times and run this code and we'll get four pop-ups so that's great if you want to spam people with your plugin so we can do a lot of things with functions you can make a generic color conversions for example where a function just has a color conversion um, logics inside of it if you want to do a color conversion you of course need to know what color you're going to convert so a function can also have parameters parameters you input within these two parentheses if we now have color value for example so now we can use this color value to do different things so we can now also just do an alert because that's easy and then just input the color value in here and now when we call this function we can use my function and then we can input a color value so white for example and then we can use that color value within the function now we just use it to print again so if we run this we'll print our color value but you can do a lot of different things with function function can also return stuff so if we want to create a new function that's we're just gonna use name calc for calculation and then we're just gonna return 5 plus 6 most difficult calculation ever and now when we input this calc function within our new function so what what now will happen is we we'll call on this function um, the color value will will be this function and this function is gonna run and it's gonna return 11 so it will be actually just to be 11 in here but we don't type 11 we just type our function so what we're gonna do is you're gonna just print 11 on the screen like that so that's functions now let's move on to some cooler stuff and we're gonna actually do manipulate objects within After Effects and actually do useful things because this you can not really do useful things with this but you need to know it if you want to program anything in extend script JavaScript and extend script are both object oriented languages which means that they revolve around using different objects to perform actions extend script objects contain attributes and methods these are things that we can use to manipulate the object to do certain things Attributes are things that an object has and methods are actions that an object can do. 
I will use a circle object as an example. The attributes of a circle object can, for example, be color and diameter. Methods for a circle object can be bounce or transform. We can use these by typing our object name and using a dot and then calling on these attributes and methods to manipulate them. For example, circle.color equals and then a color code, which would set the circle color to green. A more practical example would be the application object from After Effects. This object contains a lot of attributes. Version, settings, project, memory in use, is watch folder, is render engine, effects, disable rendering, build number, build name, available GPU axle types and active viewer. The different methods for the application object are activate, begin suppress dialogues, begin undo group, cancel task, well, yeah, a lot of them. After Effects is completely divided into objects, so you can tell the program how to work. The diagram shows the object structure of After Effects. Here you can see that the application contains a project and the project can contain items. By referencing these items in our code, we can manipulate them. To dive deeper in all the objects that you can use in After Effects, you can read the documentation. This contains all the definition of the object attributes and methods. You can also use the data browser in the Sanskrit toolkit to explore the objects. So the goal of our script is gonna be to select an, a property and put an expression on it. But to n put an expression on a property, we first need to know what property I have selected. So do we have a position selected? Do we have a skill selected? To get the current properties that are selected, we can use the object structure to get the selected properties. Do this by typing app dot project dot active item so we go into the app we go into the project we go into the active item with which means the current composition that we have selected so this we have this composition select so that's the current active item and then we do selected properties so now this selected variable has the selected properties that we have selected in After Effects. But we can uh, we can select multiple properties in After Effects. So this returns an array. So I'm first gonna explain to you what an array is. So an array is a variable type and it can contain multiple values. You create an array by using these square brackets and typing values within these square brackets. So value zero, and then comma for the next value, uh, value one, comma, value two. Now I'm just inputting a normal number in here. You can t input anything you want in there. Input a Boolean two that we talked about. And then just input hello world. Because, you know, this is a tutorial. It needs hello world in there. Now to access one of these things, we type the array name, so our our variable name is array, and then we again type these square brackets, and then we type the ID of the element that we want, and the ID start at zero. This so this has ID zero, this has ID one, this has ID two, this has ID three, and this has ID four. So you always need to remember that it starts at zero because the second element actually has an ID of one. So the second element is one, but it's the second element. So the third element actually has an ID of two, the fourth of three. So now we have just select this one. So if we want to select the property that we currently have selected in the selected properties, we just type selected, and then the square brackets again and then zero so we select the first property that we have selected and now we can do things with this property we can see what the value is so let's do that and we're just gonna alert the value on the screen of our selected property so now going to after effects I'm just gonna select the property opacity and then run this code now we have a script alert 100 because our opacity in here is 100. Now we can also change the opacity value. My computer is lagging because I'm running stuff. 
we do that by typing set value which is a function and we set the value by typing something the value in here so now we're just gonna set the value of our current selected property to 30 run the script so our opacity gonna go and go to 30 so now our opacity is 30 so now we can manipulate these things and our script is gonna manipulate the expressions you can just type dot and then expression and then just type anything we want our expression to be for example loop out now look if we still have that opacity selected so we're gonna put a loop out on this opacity and we're just gonna make it flash so we have the opacity selected now let's go back run this and look it now has a expression set on it and it's loop out another way we can utilize the after effects object structure is by setting an undo group we do that by typing app dot begin undo group and then you need to type a name of this undo group I'm just gonna type my script action and then we also need to end the undo group app dot end undo group I recommend you do this for every for every big action that your script does because now when a user control Z he just undoes all the things that are within this undo group so if you run this code now um, for example on the rotation if you run this code Wow. There's an, now an expression on the rotation, as you can see, loop out expression. And here, when we see edit, we can undo the my, my script action. We can undo that. Now the rotation doesn't have it anymore. So I recommend you do that for all the big actions you create in your scripts. So what happens right now in our code is we get all the selected properties, and then we put an expression on the first one. But what happens if we don't select any property? So we don't have any property selected right now. What if we run it? It's gonna get an error and it's gonna say down here, undefined is not an object. Stop our code by clicking on here. So what happens is our selected properties return undefined. So then the selected here, this variable is gonna be undefined and then we try to set an expression on undefined and we can set an expression on nothing so it just returns an error. So how do we prevent this? We use an if statement. So with an if statement, we can check something. So we type if, and then these parentheses, and within these parentheses, we can type in condition. We can check something. And if that something is true, we can run the code that's within these curly brackets. So for example, I'm just gonna alert a message and in here, I'm also just gonna create a, a new variable quickly. My number is equal to 10. And I'm gonna check is my number is bigger than 10 or equal to. I'm just gonna check this. If my number is bigger than or equal to 10, it's gonna alert this message. So if I run this code now, it will get an error because um, this returns an error. So just a quick tip, if you do double slash before a line of code, you comment it out and After Effects just skips this code. So we just skip this code now, we only run this. When we run it, we get a message. We get the message with message in it because 10 my number is 10 and that is equal to 10 so this will return true if it's now if we make it smaller 5 and we run it it's got not gonna do anything look after effects didn't do anything it's not gonna do anything because this if this statement here returns false so we're just gonna skip this whole code we can catch that by typing an else here and then we say if that is false so if this statement is false then we 
do this code that's within these curly brackets. We activate this code. So now it's false. Now we actually get message two right here. So that works and that's all great. We also can use an else if. So we also can extend this if statement by also typing another condition, by making another condition and checking another, another statement. We're gonna also check if my number is equal to 100. So if my number is bigger than, or I'm gonna check if my number is equal to six. If my number is bigger than or equal to 10, it's gonna have this message. If my number is equal to six, it's gonna have is six. And else it's just gonna do, I'm just gonna say else. So my number is now five. So this will return false. This will also return false because my number is not equal to six. So it's just gonna return else. And as you can see, if we want to compare two numbers, we don't use one equal sign, we use two. Because if we do one equal sign, it just it's going to act like a variable. So it's going to say my number is now the value six. But we don't, we don't want that, we want to compare it. So that's why we use two equal signs here. What we also can do is have an exclamation mark. And this means if my number is not equal to six. So we can do that and now five will this will return true so this will activate and it will alert is not six because it's, it, it's not six if we now make it six again this will return false this will return false so it will be it will say else so one last thing i want to show you oh, one last thing i want to show you with if else statements but you can also extend this statement by typing an and to and like this and then you can have another statement in here is equal to nine so now we're going to check if this is true and this is true so if both are true then we alert this then we do these actions you can also have these two lines down and that means if this is true or this is true so this is an or operator and this is an and operator so you can also use that in your if statements now back to our code if we want to check if the selected variable has any properties we can write if selected And because this is an array, we can use the dot length. And with an array, dot length returns the length of that array, so the amount of items it contains. So if this, if we have three things selected, this will become three. If we have nothing selected, this will return. This will be nothing. So we can check if length is zero, so we don't have anything selected. We can just alert to the user. Please select a property. Please select a property. Else we can activate this code and set a loop out. So if we run this right now, it's gonna say please select a property. And if we then actually select a property, go in here, actually select rotation go back and run the code it actually sets an expression on rotation as you can see rotation now has the loop out expression and we can control z it because we made an undo group so that's awesome so now we check if the selected property is not null if it's not null we can set an expression but what if we have multiple properties selected now we only get set the expression on property zero so what we then need to do is we need to loop through all the different properties that are in that array and we do that by using a for loop so to write a for loop you just write for and then these parentheses and then these curly brackets 
within these in the, within these parentheses we're going to write three statements first i'm going to write i is 0 we need to so far i we need to make a variable um, i call it i for index and set it to 0 this is the variable that starts so if the for loops get called at first this will run then we need to check for every loop we do we need to check do i still want this loop to run are we at the end of the loop or do i still need to continue so i check that by checking if i is lower than selected dot length so now every time we loop we check is i already bigger than all the properties the length of our array if it's already bigger than the length of our array there are no properties left so we can just quit if it's still bigger if it's still not big enough so it's still smaller than the length we can we have another property left so we can set another expression and then we type i plus plus and this just means actually i is i is equal to i plus one so this i plus plus actually means this so it just adds one to the i variable now what we do now we have so first we start a for loop we set an i property then every time we run the loop we check is it still smaller than the length of all our properties and if it's still smaller we run this code and at the end we add one to the i so now we loop through that whole selected um, array so now we type selected and here we we put the i inside these square brackets and then we just put this in here like that and now we what we do is we loop through all the selected properties and then we put a loop out expression on there so now if we also remove the expression from this one I'm just going to remove that and we're going to put it on position scale and opacity just on all these select all these go back and run this code it ran and look now there's a loop out expression on all of these properties so now we loop through all of them now we can set the loop out expression on all our selected properties but what if we don't want to use the loop out expression but we want just to give the user the ability to type in any expression that he wants we need a ui for that in this tutorial i'm not going to go in depth into how to build a ui so you can just go to the page i linked in the description and copy this code over here this is a piece of code that just creates a ui for us in another tutorial i'll dive deeper in how to actually create a ui but for now this will have to do so just paste it in here now we have this function um, that creates an expression panel so a UI panel and now I'm also gonna put this in a function so I'm just gonna create a new function add expression and then curly brackets put our all our code that we created within that add expression function indent it right so it's more readable and now we're gonna edit this so we can actually put in something and then we we get the value so we get the text that our user put in so here we create an expression panel um, on top of here we need to create a couple of variables so we need to create an apply button so the button that um, we click to apply the expression and an input expression expression input um, as you can see over here we ha already have those variables so I create a variable here and then here I set the variable and I set it to an edit text with 25 characters and now we just need to call this expression panel at the top of our we also need to add this piece of code so we need to wrap 
all our code in in this function in this general function which returns this object and that's just actually our app object um, like this then like this like this in here so now we can give this object into that expression panel because we need it in here to create the panel so now when we run this it will actually create um, this panel and on the button we apply an on click event and that on click event actually um, fires off this expression so the on click event fires off the add expression what we now still need to do is over here when we click on the button it will still put all our, sh our expressions on loop out we actually want the to get the text from this expression input and we do that by typing expression input dot text so we get the text from this expression input now when we run this I hope everything is alright yes we have this panel over here as you can see now it's set on loop out we can change it we can for now I'm just gonna undo what we just did select opacity click on apply and look we apply an expression on this one if we wanna change this to loop in apply it over there we can apply the loop in expression so we can so select multiple expressions and apply to multiple exp expressions so we can just type an expression in here and apply it on a lot of different properties so that's it now we have a working piece of code now that the code is tested and it works we can input it in after effects so now that so that when the next time we start it up it will just be in here in the window you can just select it from there so to do that I'm just gonna close this not save um, I'm, I'm gonna save this file for now I'm just gonna save it on the desktop and how you name this file that's also the name that will show up in the drop down in After Effects so um, I'm just gonna name it X expression script one save it now I'm gonna close this and here we have our expression script now I'm gonna go to this PC go to the place where you have installed your for me it's in program files over here and then Adobe and then go to After Effects support files and then go to scripts script UI panels and now put your code in here continue we'll move our expression script one into there now close this one start up after effects and now we can just open our script from within after effects and use it and then you have built your first script congratulations so still a few tips um, if you're debugging if you're co uh, controlling your application if you're checking if everything is working use a lot of alerts within your code so that you can go through it one by one and alert what happens so you know um, where the code is going which if statements it's using how many times it's looping and so forth that's really handy you can also use comments that I showed you with the double forward slash to just describe what you're doing to just say here I'm looping through the function here I'm doing this here I'm doing that it doesn't help the code but it helps you understand the code when you open it up and at a later date and when you open it up three months later you forgot totally what you're written and it's nice when you still have those comments there to know and um, to quickly grasp what you did actually also try to use descriptive variable names it makes it way easier to um, read it in the future and also I link a couple of helpful sites on my site so you can go through there go read the documentation and figure it out on your own 
and just try different things and and set a goal for yourself i want to do this with a script and try to make it a reality and probably you'll come across a lot of problems and you'll fix all of those and in the end you will have a great script like this one maybe it's something that's even better accustomed to what you want i'm just gonna open this one now here we can scroll down and have our expression script open it and here we have it our expression script now we can have it open we can just select things we can select the transform opacity and apply and it works it has expression so thank you for watching see you in the next tutorial